over generous introduction. He left out the fact that he was the president of CIS when we started uh, PCC, and a good number of those of us who were uh, part of the founding were here because of him and uh, Lawrence Rockefeller. So you may have already known that. Come on in. I just I just started. Um, you may have already known that, but uh, he wasn't only the uh, program director in sequence after uh, myself and Sean. Uh, it, we were very lucky that he would be um, willing to come onto the faculty of PCC after he became president emeritus. And um, now, uh, not only do you, uh, on the faculty, but actually kind of guiding it now as the, as the director. So uh, we have, uh, we go to 11.15, so we have an, uh, 60, 40, uh, uh, hour. yeah, we have an hour and 45 minutes, or hour and 40 minutes, 100 minutes, to, uh, to do two things. One is I'm gonna give a little bit of an introduction to the overall PCC vision as these several of us um, founders, uh, co-founders were um, working uh, working with a lot, and then uh, and that that overlaps with the, my presentation today, which will be about the, uh, an overview of the Western intellectual, spiritual, cultural. Uh, tradition and uh, history, the evolution of that form of consciousness has had such an enormous influence on the uh, on the world, on the state of the earth, and um, where we are today, understanding our moment in that larger trajectory. Okay, so those are the the, the, the tasks. The first one will be very brief, though, just on about PCC. Uh, Brian Swim, Charlene Sprutnack, uh, actually Ralph Metzner was part of these discussions in the beginning too, uh, and uh, David Ulancey, Robert McDermott, myself. Um, we, were, we were interested in founding a, a graduate program that basically would be the program we'd want to go to if we were going into graduate school now. And um, all of us were aware then, as we're even more aware now, of the urgency, the gravity, the um, uh, magnitude of the um, transformation of our world that is happening today. And it, much as we're all devoted scholars, there's a way in which we recognize that a kind of separated spectator kind of scholarship that is looking at a situation without engaging it in a, um, a highly um, committed way is no longer an option. And so um, one of the things that we felt about this profound transformation of the world is that we wanted to as much as possible, nurture a grasp of the of the bigger picture. What's shaping uh, our world today? And uh, to and part one of the assumptions of that is recognizing that we don't have our fingers directly on the levers of power uh, that a person does at the um, in a, a CEO uh, at a multinational corporation uh, does or in the um, halls of power in Washington or New York or London. Um, and yet we do have a certain kind of power, every one of us, and it's um, in, in particularly in this community, and it's a power to uh, understand as much as possible and then perhaps um, play a small role in shifting and transforming the world view. We, and that, how the worldview shifts, 
changes the world. Um, and in a sense, a cosmology, using that term in the larger sense coming from the Greek cosmos and logos, and the logos even means story uh, uh, as uh, um, one, one of the great, uh, one of the major definitions of the term uh, using Brian and uh, Thomas Berry's um, focus on story. A cosmology really is the container within which everything that happens in a, in a civilization uh, takes place. The assumptions, the underlying principles, the operating uh, uh, assumptions of, of a given society are, are essentially uh, shaped by the cosmology. And so understanding that cosmology is, uh, is, is extremely important. And we felt that we could basically do that um, only if we had a radically multidisciplinary uh, program that drew on uh, science, that drew on uh, religious studies, that drew on psychology, that drew on philosophy, each of them playing a crucial role. Um, not only multidisciplinary, but also interdisciplinary, so that there's a, uh, a, a dialogue between the different disciplines, but also transdisciplinary, recognizing that the reality that we're attempting to, to grasp and participate in is not divided neatly into different disciplines. It's, it's, a, um, it's a complex gestalt that each discipline gain, has a certain entrance into, um, but through a profound dialogue amongst many disciplines entering into that mystery, we're more likely to be able to, uh, to um, participate more intelligently in it. Um, an another starting assumption of the program is the importance of history. Uh, of understanding our history, our past, our ancestors, um, the, the, that of the larger uh, human community. And I'm thinking here of Daniel Burstein, the uh, uh, historian who was the librarian of Congress for some years, and he, he had a phrase, he said, trying to, uh, he had a dictum really, uh, Trying to create the future without knowing the past is like trying to plant cut flowers. Something our, our ecological, environmental, uh, integral e ecological component of the program can, a, a metaphor it can, it can very much appreciate. Uh, we also uh, want to not just understand our our worldview, our history, uh, we want to play a role in, in its future. We want to, uh, there's an activist, activist interventionist dimension to, to the program. Um, and in terms of cultural sources, uh, we're interested in um, ancient and archaic and uh, primal and indigenous worldviews and and perspectives, uh, also in uh, esoteric and, and mystical traditions. Um, there's a, a strong focus on um, appreciating the mystery of, of feminine and masculine, uh, which um, I would also uh, suggest, uh, argue, uh, in, in, in alignment with many others who've been thinking about this, that we complexify those terms, masculine and feminine, uh, by bringing in an understanding, for example, the solar and lunar principles, and that there can be a, a solar feminine as well as a lunar feminine, a solar masculine, but also a lunar masculine. That's something for another uh, day, but just to some of us has, have a certain discomfort with too simple a statement about the feminine is this or the masculine is that. 
it's, it's, more, it's more complicated. Um, uh, we're very interested in new paradigm studies, new paradigm thinkers, uh, and um, behind much of what I've just said, you can you can sense the uh, openness to and even commitment to the importance of spiritual uh, experience and perspectives, uh, a taking seriously of the spiritual dimension of, of life and not just studying it as a kind of uh, separate, interesting, weird, outvoted species of human consciousness, but something that is uh, uh, vital, living, and is probably present even in the most um, secularized um, perspectives that we may, may study today. <coughs> and then, uh, something about the West. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the West today. And there is a certain recognition of the, of, of the importance of understanding the Western intellectual and spiritual tradition in this program. Part of that is, comes from the fact that most of us in this room and in the program have been shaped by the West. This is our ancestry. This is, this is our tradition. Um, Understanding our ancestors is crucial to living forward our particular um, uh, tribal uh, stream. But there's no, uh, at least, conscious. Uh, there, there's there's a strong, uh, critical approach to the West and to modernity. That being said, it's essential to the Western tradition to be critical and self-critical. There's a kind of rebellious, almost counter-cultural, uh, uh, critical defiance and revisioning that goes, comes right from the roots of our tradition, the Hebrew prophets, the Greek philosophers. Um, they each were essentially critiquing either the powers that be political sense, but also what was believed to be true prior to their time, but then they have their own uh, the whole idea is to somehow absorb as clearly as possible, as deeply as possible, what has been thought, what has been felt, um, what has been imagined up until this time, and then to uh, to critique it, to, to in a sense use the multiple st strands that one has inherited to come uh, deepen and complexify one's vision and uh, uh, bring forth uh, something new that will um, freshly engage the, the the present, the moment uh, that we're that we're in today, that has uh, its own particular uh, needs and its own particular realities that bring forth fresh um, understandings. <coughs> 